So again, chapter three um, is where we're starting today, and it does feel like a lot of review. The main difference I think you guys will find is we're going to be doing operations with decimals and fractions in chapter three, but it will also include decimals or uh, negative numbers, positives and negatives. So in the past, you guys have done this with all positives, but now we're also throwing the negatives in. With that, some of what we're doing is review, and some of it will feel new, okay? Let's get your objective written at the top. We'll start with an I can statement. I can add and subtract decimals, comma, including integers. So we're going to do a few examples together. Often you'll see in your book problems will be written like this. I want you to think about what you know about the main rule when we're adding or subtracting decimals. The main thing we want to do is line up the decimals. So we're going to rewrite this as 14 and 73 hundredths plus 23 and 59 hundredths. And then we're just going to add it by hand rather than use a calculator. It's good for your brain. 3 plus 9 would be 12. We carry the 1. 1 plus 7 is 8, 8 plus 5, 13, carry the 1, 1 and 4 is 5, plus 3 is 8, and 1 and 2 is 3. And we just bring that decimal straight down and it goes into its place because it's all lined up. You might also see problems that look like this. As you guys know, we love our invisible things in math, and this 12 does have a decimal. It just happens to be right after it. So if we're going to line these two up, we're going to do it like this. And that looks sort of funny to be adding 12 decimal plus 4.385. So we can just put zeros in to be placeholders so that that has something to be added with. So we're going to do 0 plus 5, 0 plus 8, 0 plus 3. Bring down the decimal. 2 plus 4 is six and bring down that one. If I really wanted to put something else in as a placeholder, I could also put a zero here, couldn't I? Just to show that there's something in each place, but do I need to? No. So like I said, so far this should feel like review, but let's throw some in with negatives. You might see something in your book that looks like this. Those parentheses are just there to kind of hold that negative with it. Whenever we have a positive and a negative or two signs, we like to put parentheses just to separate them. So when I rewrite this, I don't even really need to rewrite it with the parentheses because when I line it up, it's going to look like this. And I can put a placeholder zero here. So I get seven plus zero is seven. Eight plus nine is 17. Bring down my decimal. One plus nine is 10. 
plus 8 is 18. And I have two negatives here, but when we're adding, we're just adding two negatives together, right? So this has to just stay negative because I have a negative 9.87 and a negative 18.9. Okay, there are some colors near you. I want you to pick one. And we're gonna go back and look and see if we can do some estimating to check our work. So if I started off with 14.73, I wanna round that to a whole number. And think about 1473 as money. What's it close to? It's close to 15. The seven is above five. And so we're gonna take the number that's in the tenths place and we're gonna round it. And this becomes 15. 23.5 is close to 24. 15 and 19 together, or 15 and 24 together is nine, three. Are these two pretty close together? Yeah, this is an estimate. 39 is pretty close to 38, 32. So we would say that our estimate is showing us we're pretty close. Let's try it with this one. We started off with just 12. So it's gonna stay as 12. And then we had 4.385. 4.3 is what we're looking at. Are we gonna round that four up or keep it where it is? Let's keep it where it is. 12 and four is 16. And over here I had 16.385, so an estimate of 16 gets us pretty close. What about with our negative numbers? Well, 9.87 is pretty close to negative 10. And negative 18.9, we're gonna look at that nine in the tenths place, and we're gonna round the 18 up to 19. And when I add those two together, I get negative 29, which is really close to negative 28 and 77 hundredths. So estimating what I'm adding with decimals can give us a good idea. We don't have to go and redo them or see if we can add and get the same thing twice, but estimating is a good way to check your work and see if it's correct. Let's try that with some subtraction. A couple more examples. Okay, 15 and 36 hundredths minus six and 15 hundredths. Let's do our estimating first this time. If I'm gonna round 15.3, it's gonna stay where it is. Because the three is lower than a five. And the same with 6.1, it's going to stay at a six. We're not gonna round it up. 15 and six is Oops, I forgot I was subtracting here. 15 minus six is nine. So we're looking to see if when I subtract this, if we're pretty close to nine. So let's start on the far right. Six minus five is one. Three minus one is two. Bring down our decimal. Five minus six we need to borrow. So we're gonna say, it's actually just gonna be the 15, isn't it? So 15 minus six is nine. Nine and 21 hundredths is close to nine, so our estimate is close to our solution, and we can feel pretty confident in our answer then. Last problem. You might see it like this in your book but we would just rewrite it like this. Okay. 
Remember there's an invisible decimal there. We can make it visible. We can put in zeros as placeholders. We're definitely gonna have to do some borrowing on this one. I'm gonna have to go all the way over here to borrow this one and make this 10. I can borrow from this and make this 10 and this nine. Ten minus eight is two. Nine minus two is seven. Bring down our decimal. Now I'm going to look up here. Do I have to borrow from this two to make this one work, or can I just think about this as twenty minus seven? Well, twenty and seven are thirteen apart, so it's thirteen and seventy-two hundredths. Again, we can do our estimates. 21 would be 21. Minus 7. We would end up with 14, which is pretty close to 13 and 72 hundredths. So again, estimating these is a really great way to check your work. I'm going to give you guys a new contract and when you get it this is what you're going to write onto it 3-2 we're going to page 150 numbers 10 through 25 and we can check that work when we're back in class again tomorrow